So this is how to set up a truth table part two statement columns. In this episode, we're going to complete the final setup of a truth table by identifying the compound statements within the target statement, that is, the statement that we're constructing the truth table for, entering each compound statement in its own column on the table, and entering the target statement itself in a column on the table. So let's say you have a statement like this one, if P and Q, then Q and R, and you need to make a truth table. How do you do it? Well, in part one, we figured out how many possible combinations of truth values there are, and we got a table that looked like this, where each statement letter gets its own column, and we filled in the possible combinations of truth values. Well, what do you do next? Next, you need to identify the compound statements that are contained within the target statement. So why are we doing this? Well, when we have a complex compound statement, it's going to be very difficult to figure out what its truth values will be unless we first figure out what the truth values of the parts of the statement will be. So we need to create a column for each of the compound statements that are contained within the target statement. So in our example, the target statement is this, if P and Q, then Q and R. So what are the component compound statements? Well, this is a conditional whose antecedent is P and Q, and whose consequent is Q and R. So we'll need a truth column for each of these component parts, a column for the antecedent, and a column for the consequent. So on the table, we have a column with P and Q, the antecedent, and one for Q and R, the consequent. The final step is just to add the target statement itself to the table, giving it its own column. And that looks like this. So this example was fairly easy because uh, the compound statements contained within the target statement were both composed only of simple statements, in this case, P, Q, and R. But it isn't always that easy. So let's say you have a more complex statement like this one, which is if, if P then not Q, then either P or Q and R. And you need to make a truth table for it. Well, remember that the number of rows for the table is given by the formula 2 to the n, where n is the number of statement letters. So in this case, since there are three statement letters, there are two to the three rows, or eight rows. So after the initial setup, it's going to look like this. The statement letters, P, Q, and R, each have their own column. And we've also filled in the possible combinations of truth values according to the method that we learned in the last episode. So in our example, with the, with the target statement, P, horseshoe, tail, the Q, horseshoe, P wedge, Q dot R, what are the component compound statements here? So this statement is a conditional whose antecedent is P horseshoe tilde Q, or if P then not Q, and whose consequent is P wedge, Q dot R, or either P or Q and R. But each of these two component parts actually have compounds as parts of them. So with the antecedent, if P, then not Q, tilde Q is itself a compound statement. And for the consequent, P wedge Q dot R, Q dot R is itself a compound statement. So tilde Q is going to need its own column, and Q dot R is going to need its own column as well. So on the truth table for our target statement, we're going to need a truth column for each of the following component parts. One for tilde Q, one for Q dot R, one for P horseshoe tilde Q, and one for P wedge Q dot R. So now we need to enter each of these component compounds onto our table. And we need to put them in order of complexity with the simplest or least complex first. Now complexity is a function of the number of statement letters that appear in the compound statement in addition to the number of operators that appear. So the simplest compound statement will be 
one letter, and one operator. So in our case, we have tilde Q, and that's an example of the simplest compound statement you can get. One statement letter, one operator. The next most compound statement will be two letters and one operator. And you build complexity from there. So in our case, the next statement that will go on the table is Q dot R. And then we're going to have P horseshoe tilde Q. And then P wedge Q dot R. And if you look, you'll see that these are clearly put in order of complexity, tilde Q being the simplest or least complex, and P wedge Q dot R being the most complex. Finally, we're going to add a column for the target statement itself. And there it is. So that concludes part two of setting up a truth table. In the next episode, we'll learn how to complete the table.